The Cumberland Gap Historic National Park, where I camped the last two nights, and the 62 national parks and over 6,600 state parks in the United States are protected by the United States Park Rangers. Their duties include law enforcement, the protection of natural resources and ecosystems, the wildlife in them, and the people who visit them. During my stay at the Cumberland Gap, I befriended Ranger John, who offered to drive me through the Cumberland Gap Tunnel, which was completed in 1996 and was built to replace a stretch of US 25 East known as Massacre Mountain due to its dangerous twisting mountain roads. Just got here to Food City and loaded up on some groceries for tonight. I'm having fun making dinners. I just stopped at this uh, pilot refueling station for big truckers and stuff and this lady that works in there was outside and uh, and she gave me this. It's a two free showers at any pilot, any time. Then she came back out and gave me a couple of pieces she calls prayer cloths. There's some sweet people all over. Prayer cloths are sacramentals. They are material objects that have been ritually blessed to incite reverence during acts of worship and then given to someone as a tangible reminder that friends are praying for them. They are especially popular amongst the Methodist and Pentecostal traditions of Christianity, although other Christian denominations use them as well. I kept my two prayer cloths with me in my handlebar bag for the rest of my trip. The Cumberland River is 688 miles long, draining almost 18,000 square miles of southern Kentucky and north central Tennessee. It flows westward from the Appalachian Mountains to its confluence with the Ohio River near Paducah, Kentucky and the mouth of the Tennessee River. I'm going, I'm going. I'm in some back road in Kentucky trying to get to a Daniel Boone National Forest. Made it to Daniel Boone National Forest. This is called Laurel River Dam. Built in 1964 by the Army Corps of Engineers with a height of 282 feet, the Laurel River Dam and its lake are tributaries of the Cumberland River and are located inside the boundaries of Daniel Boone National Forest. Hydropower production started in 1977 and as of 2006, it provides an average annual energy of 67 gigawatt hours. With an average annual consumption for a U.S. residence at about 11,000 kilowatt hours, Laurel River Dam generates enough power for over 6,000 homes. It's uh, 5.30. I've been riding since 7.30 like really non-stop today. Lots of hills still. But look at this campsite. This place is unreal beautiful. I'm leaving uh, Holly Bay in Kentucky. This is Daniel Boone's National Forest. I did 77 miles yesterday. The hills are getting to be behind me. So I'm kind of going faster now. Officially named the Rattlesnake, Highway 192 is a 12-mile remote twisty road in the foothills of southern Kentucky connecting the cities of London and Somerset.
Time to climb. These Kentucky hills are no joke. They are steep and long, really. That rattlesnake road was 20 miles of up and down, like North Carolina. I had a ball. It was gorgeous, the turns, the scenery, the nature. Kentucky is just gorgeous. Here's the dilemma. I've been on this uh, road, 80 West, that's paralleling the Cumberland Parkway, which I don't think I'm supposed to be on, but I'm sick of being without a shoulder and these cars are all over me. I'm about to take the Cumberland Parkway. <laughs> 32 more miles. It's gonna be like close to an 80 mile day. I'm doing it. Having been one of the most scenic freeways I cycled on during my tour, the Louis B. Nunn Cumberland Parkway is a 92 mile long east to west highway extending from Barron County and the city of Somerset. It is only one of seven named freeways in Kentucky's parkway system and parallels Kentucky Route 80 for its entire length. The parkway passes the cities of Glasgow, Edmonton, Columbia, and Russell Springs. After spending the night in a hotel in Columbia, I happily continue westward on the Cumberland Parkway, carefree and ignorant of my future encounter with the law. So I got pulled over by a Kentucky state trooper telling me I couldn't be in the parkway. I guess I made it 45 miles or so before I got caught, but he was so nice. And thanks, because he was really cool. He didn't ticket me or anything. He just called a buddy of his to come pick me up for 20 bucks and took me to the next uh, exit. And in the process, I stuck my whole sprocket right on my... I don't know if you can see that, but big gash. I'm gonna clean that up and put a band-aid on it and keep riding. <laughs> Back on the road. I think that needs stitches. I just asked these young guys if I could stop because I saw one selling vegetables on, on the road there, Ryan and Daniel, and they, they were nice enough to help me with a hose and I scrubbed it with soap and I'm putting alcohol in it with my pads, but it's a crater. <laughs> it's like, I don't know that I could not have a stitch on there, but I'm gonna give it a try.
I'm at a Mammoth Cave National Park. I've been having a leaky tube for miles. Every three, four miles, I gotta stop and repump it. I don't feel like changing the tube right now. I'm almost there. I'm like a mile away right now, but started doing it about nine miles away. I spent the night at Mammoth Cape National Park and I'm gonna spend another night. I'm gonna stick around here and check out the sites. I hear it's gorgeous. So there's a lot of bike trails too. So I, I changed my tube. My tube yesterday was giving me all kinds of trouble and I worked on my injury <laughs> from the sprocket on my crank digging into my ankle. I feel like I hit bone and everything. It's a crater, but I washed it with water and soap with those two kids, Ryan and Daniel, yesterday. And I put a lot of alcohol in it. And then I put one of these band-aids that don't have the, the cloth on it. They seal the wound and the, it, it heals on its own without doing anything. They're waterproof and you can keep them for a long time. It doesn't hurt, so I think I'm gonna be good. Probably leave a scar, but I kind of like scars. Anyways, I'm gonna go right around and check this Mammoth Cave National Park. Mammoth Cave was established as a national park in 1941, a World Heritage Site in 1981, and an International Biosphere Reserve in 1990. The Green River and its tributary, the Nolan River, run through the park's 52,830 acres. I go show up over there at the Mammoth Cave and they're telling me that I can't get in there because it's all reservation based. I mean, I can't make a reservation when I don't even know when I'm gonna get to a spot. So I try to explain that to everybody and nobody wanted to help me at the actual place. Check out these turkeys. <laughs> They're all over the place. How cool. Anyways, I finally like I thought I wasn't gonna be able to see the caves So I go back to the campground and I talk to the lady that registers me in there. She tells me she can't do anything Finally, she's like, all right, I'll make a call So she made a call and then she's like hurry over there and talk to this lady and you'll get in so <laughs> I went from like really being bummed out about not being able to see these caves to I got some pool now. <laughs> I'm gonna go see the caves. It goes from being super hot up there, and as soon as you get close to the entrance, it's like 50 degrees. It's pretty cool. Can you imagine finding this for the first time? Mammoth Cave is the longest cave system known in the world, and it's nearly twice as long as the second longest system, the Mexico's Sac Acton Underwater Cave. It developed from thick Mississippian H limestone strata capped by a layer of sandstone. It has more than 400 miles of passageways, and new connections are discovered annually adding to its length. Mammoth Cave is also home to the endangered Kentucky Cave Shrimp, a sightless albino shrimp.